Welcome to my house. Welcome to the Structure Talk podcast, a production of Structure Tech Home Inspections. My name is Ruben Saltzman. I'm your host, alongside building science geek, Tessa Murray. We help home inspectors up their game through education, and we help homeowners to be better stewards of their houses. We've been keeping it real on this podcast since 2019, and we are also the number one home inspection podcast in the world, according to my mom. Welcome back to the show. Tessa, great to see you. What's new in your world? Hey, Ruben, it's good to see you too. Well, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on in my world, both personally and professionally. It's keeping me pretty busy, but I I can't complain. How about you? Uh, stay in, stay in. I, I've, I've had a full calendar lately. I, I feel like I'm yeah. just backlogged on a lot of stuff. I ended oh, up, same. uh, I ended up teaching in Seattle for this, uh, for this home inspector group there. I, I did my first, it was my first time teaching for six hours. I've always said, wow. if I'm going to teach somewhere, I'm, I'm no more than four hours. That's my limit. Four hours and I'm done. <laughs> But I was the only speaker for this one. So I, I agreed to do six wow. hours and that was a marathon. It was long. Doesn't it give you that much more respect for people, you know, in the industry that can literally present for six hours straight or eight hours or do a, you know, a two day conference or something like that. It is, it takes a ton of energy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they do that. It's, it, it is a I lot. And not only that, but just. My voice, like my throat starts to hurt after talking for that long. It gets dry. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, how did it go? What did you, what were the topics that you were teaching about? Uh, I talked on old houses for the first four hours. And, you know, it's, wow. it's, I've got a class that's either two hours or four hours. And after doing that four hour version, I realized I'm never going to teach on that for two hours again. There's just way too much that I have to rush through when I'm doing two hours. Yeah. There's way too many concepts that I just end up having to gloss over. So I'm not, I'm not doing it again. I, I'm just, I, that's on my list of things to do is I need to remove wow. that from the website. I'm not willing to do a two hour version of that class. So what about for real estate agents? Would you teach a two hour class on old houses to, to realtors? Um, yeah, I think we've got a three hour class on old houses for that. Okay. And yeah. I had originally pared it down to a two hour class for home inspectors because that's what the ashy inspection world slots were for speakers. They always wanted two hour yeah. slots. So I made it a two hour class, but I, I won't yeah. do it again. <laughs> Well, and that class is just so, there's so much rich content in it. You talk about everything from like knob and tube wiring to fuses to old chimney, stucco covered chimneys yeah. and everything in between. And it's, I think it's just, it's a great class. Um, so if you are someone who's interested in learning about all these old house things, how can they get a hold of this class or get a hold of you, Ruben? Well, you know what? If you email our podcast email that we always give out, that will go to me. It's podcast at structuretech.com. And I'll teach anywhere. You know, it's, it's, a, I've got a, I got a good hourly rate that I charge and travel mm -hmm. expenses, of course, you know, whatever it costs yeah. takes me to get there. That's, that's yep. the fee. Uh, but yeah, I, I love teaching and I, I always take one of my kids with me when I go. So I brought my son to Seattle and, there was a bunch oh, that we fun. did, you know, to see all the stuff that they've got to see down there. It's It was a good time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Well, and I'm, yeah, and for a while there during COVID, I know, you know, you weren't doing any, tra we weren't doing any traveling for teaching, but now it sounds like these ashy chapters are kind of back up and running and, and uh, having you teach in person again. So that's fun. Yeah, exactly. And this wasn't an ashy chapter. This is just another okay. home inspector chapter. I think they used to be ashy when you went down there and you taught, but they've they've yeah. separated now and they're just kind of an independent chapter. So true. Yes. Yeah. Just to clarify, if you're listening, you don't have to be a member of ashy to have Ruben come out and speak. Like he said, <laughs> right. he'll do it for a fee. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Tess? Are you still willing to come speak for a fee? I I am actually I am I haven't had any time to create new content. Um, well, I guess that's not true. I have put together a new class that I I I taught for um for Rethos, a local nonprofit, about 
preservation in older houses and how to upgrade them in terms of building performance and energy efficiency um, without creating any unintended consequences. So that was a fun class. Um, but that was more geared towards, I think, homeowners and real estate agents and contractors. But yeah, I uh, I would I love teaching as well, and I'm hoping I can do more of that this year. So I bet you'll first be doing a first. ton. Yeah, I was gonna say first things first. There's a there's one class left of um, the building science class I'm teaching at the University of Minnesota this semester, and then after that, I'll have a little bit more free time. I think. <laughs> okay, how's that been going? A little bit more bandwidth. It's been going well. I, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a full circle moment being back at the university and sitting in on a class I took, you know, uh, years ago. Um, and this time I'm kind of, you know, I'm helping teach it and I am constantly humbled by the knowledge of Pat Hellman <laughs> and yeah. always learning new things. So I'm just, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Well, you, you bring up Pat Hillman, and, and that's that's a nice segue into what we're going to be talking about today. This is uh, this is your brainchild today. Why don't, why don't you explain what we're going to be sharing today, Tess? I thought it might be fun for us to share some of our, um, the people who have influenced us, our, some of our mentors um, professionally, both you and I, and discuss that a little bit today. Okay. Yeah. A little homage to our, uh, yeah. to, to the people who came before us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How we got to where we are today and people who have helped us get here. So. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, you, you brought this up to me and I, uh, I got a list. I got a list. I don't, uh, I, I don't know how much I'm going to get through this, list? but, um, <laughs> I think I wrote down like 10 or 11 people. I, I'm, I'm not going to. Okay. Dig, we're not going to do any deep dives into all these, but there's there's a number of people I want to give uh, give some shout outs to. Definitely. Well, I'm interested. I am very curious to hear your list, Ruben. Yeah, my list is not quite that long. I I had kind of a tough time as I was thinking about this um, topic today. I have had so many people in my life that have you know influenced me and helped me become the person that I am, but I decided to kind of rein it in because we <laughs> this show we're going to try and keep it short um like you said i'm not going to go deep on on all these people and so i wanted to just kind of focus on some of the kind of my main mentors throughout my professional life so my list is a little bit shorter i've got about five people why don't you kick it off let's hear should we kick it off i bet okay. i i bet i could guess one of them <laughs> you're right you're right so let's start let's start with him let's start with pat hellman so everybody knows we've had pat on the show he um if if you weren't listening to the podcast episode with pat hellman i would strongly suggest you go back and listen to it he is a nationally and known wait, Tess, before um, you go any farther just um s spell his name for us because i i want to i want to <laughs> type in hill man and that's not how you spell it if you're searching Patrick for it hellman yeah um, it's H U E L M A N. Thank you. Okay. Pat Hellman. Yes. And, uh, he's been a, you know, professor at the university of Minnesota for decades, I think since the eighties or nineties, he was part of the cold climate housing, um, division, and he's done a bunch of research, uh, department of energy research and various other things. He's, he's kind of one of the original, the, the way that I look at the original uh, godfathers of building science, of what we know of building science today um, in yeah. the U.S. And so he kind of got into it. He has an engineering background, and he kind of fell into this back in the 70s during the energy crisis. And, uh, and as we were making our houses better insulated and more airtight, then we started having all these moisture problems. And so he was there at the very beginning of that trend trying to figure out what was going on and how to fix it and so he is a brilliant mind and he is always kind of thinking about if this then that and his brain is just uh it it's it's fun to watch him think through something um you'll never get a black or white answer from him <laughs> 
Um, That's where and you he's get taught it. me. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, obviously, we're talking about our influencers today. Um, building science is really understanding all the different variables and how they play together and how one thing influences another. And it's risk assessment. And he is he is the best at that. And um, and so anyways, I, I've learned a lot of, you know, just building science, but not only building science, just kind of the way to think through things too from Pat. So I wanted to take a moment here and just uh, say thank you, Pat. And um, yeah, and uh, I appreciate all that he's done for this industry and all the people that he is, he's influenced and taught. And he's been a great support too, even beyond, you know, my days at the university. He's, um, he, you know, he's connected me with so many people professionally too. He's just a, a wealth of information and contact. So great, great person. Yeah. Yeah. Really knowledgeable yeah. guy. Yeah. Very knowledgeable. Yep. yep. Excellent. Who's next? Okay. Yeah. How, well, how about you? Let's throw it over to you, Ruben. All right. Well, I bet you could guess one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hint. Uh, I've known him for a really, really long time. Since you were born? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Is this your dad? That'd be my pops. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I learned great. construction growing up with my dad. I'd I'd be on job sites, you know, I was homeschooled and I'd he was a carpenter, so I'd I'd take time off of school all the time to come help him learning power tools, construction, all that fun stuff. And then once once he got into home inspections, that's where I learned home inspections from. I mean, spent tons mm-hmm. and tons of time going on so many inspections with him, uh, just learning how to do this and be, and be diligent and, and got, got mm-hmm. so much great advice for him, from him uh, my, my whole life. But I mean, especially when it comes to the professional career, um, yeah. that, that's really what formed my base knowledge of how to be a home inspector was going around with him. No doubt about it. Wow. Yep. Wow. Thank you, Neil. Yeah. Appreciate <laughs> it, Pops. Yep. You know, he's, he's actually on my list too, Ruben. Okay. Let's hear so I actually, so you and your dad are on my list. Um, I was going to go chronologically, but I, I'm just going with the flow here. And I, I, I also want to pay tribute to Neil and to you because, um, you know, I did not grow up with a dad or anyone in the construction industry or ho- home inspection. And I was brand new to the home inspection world in 2016, when uh, our paths crossed and um, you asked if I ever thought about becoming a home inspector <laughs> yeah. and I said no. Um, but, uh, but, but you and your dad both have really influenced me professionally and I have learned so much from both of you. And like you said, not only the technical stuff, which is, I mean, just invaluable and, um, I, you, you've, you've taught me so many things technically that I, you know, I couldn't have got from a book or, you know, um, you're such a great teacher, but, uh, also just, you know, the other, the other skills too, that go along with being a successful home inspector and a successful person just, and running your, you know, running a business, the way that you, um, treat people and the way that you, uh, communicate and your priorities, um, are something that's definitely influenced me as well too. And I know that, you know, you you and your dad are similar in that way. Um, so I, you know, one of the quotes that you always say, a rising tide lifts all boats. And that's, you know, how you, we've talked about that before on the podcast, but I mean, you really give back to this industry as much as you can, because you want to help, you know, improve the, the entire industry and share your knowledge and um it's a it's a abundance mindset and i really respect that but you're also putting out really good quality content and information um that's accurate and a lot of times it's kind of a a newer perspective on things as well like even your class about um how to identify water intrusion from the exterior i mean it seems like it's such a basic 
you know, concept, right? But yeah. I haven't come across anyone else that's teaching people how to think that way or how to look <laughs> at a house that way. And it's it's so critical. It's it's one of the most foundational things, I think, when you're assessing, you know, a house and its potential failure points or building performance issues or durability problems. It's it's looking at a house like that through that lens. And so I, you know, that's just one example, but but both you and your dad have just been really influential in my life. Oh, thanks, Tess. Appreciate it. Well, you, yeah. you, you bring up the part about rising tide lifts all boats, and I, I'll, I'll go a little bit out of order here too. Uh, there's there's a guy who I, I, I feel like I've really modeled a lot of my drive to educate the profession around mm. the late Jack Pixley. This guy was yeah. a, a chimney professional. He was a chimney contractor and and an educator and a chimney inspector. And and this guy would go all over the country teaching chimney contractors all all about chimney inspections and how to do a better job. And I mean, yeah. he he wrote articles that were published on a on a national scale. And he he was a local guy here in the Twin Cities. And I, I'm glad. I had the opportunity to sit through a number of his classes that he taught here locally before he passed away, which was, mm. I mean, now it's got to be 10, 15 years ago. It's been a while, wow. but um, I, I, I remember picking that, just really gravitating or grabbing onto that idea that a rising tide lifts all boats. You make the industry mm. better and everybody does better. It's not like you're improving your competition. You're making things better for yourself too. So I got to give yeah. a shout out to him when you, when you mentioned that. Mm, but um, That's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, but, but going back a uh, couple of other people that I've, I've learned yeah. a lot from uh, I, another just OG in the home inspection field here would be Dwayne sure. Erickson. And yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Dwayne. I, yeah. He, he was with structure tech since my dad bought the company in 97. He had started a year prior to my dad buying the business. So he was with structure tech forever. And I learned a ton from him. I mean, I, I went on more inspections yeah. with my pops than I did Dwayne, but I still went on a ton of inspections with Dwayne. I mean, I learned a yeah. lot from him about, you know, just, poking and prodding and being curious yeah. and finding water problems and just never stop Talk being about curious. spidey senses. He had the best spidey senses, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he absolutely <laughs> did. It's like he just he just knew where to look. He was yeah. he was really good. And and he's the yeah. guy who would always wear uh, he'd always wear overalls to home inspections. Yeah, overalls, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never saw him wear anything other than that. <laughs> Pretty sure that's all he ever wears. You, I mean, you go to his church. I'm sure he's standing there in church with his his bib overalls. <laughs> oh for sure. man, he, it's funny that you say that. I remember I walked into a house with him one time, and it was a it it was kind of a unique constructed uniquely constructed house in St. Paul, and we were standing on the second level, and it was this big open room. And he had his, he always walked around with like a clipboard and he would take notes. Um, and then he'd pull out his digital camera and snap a picture, but then he'd always write things down by hand. He was old school and, uh, he was carrying the clipboard. I remember watching him walk into the center of this room and he stood there for a second. I was kind of just watching him. Um, and uh, I was still really green. And, uh, and then I saw him look around and then jump into the air and I never saw Dwayne jump that was the first time I saw him jump and I was like what the and then when he landed the whole floor just shook and like things moved and I was like oh my gosh okay and we went back down to the first floor and you could see that the construction of the way that it was finished is you could actually see the structural beams of the house. It wasn't like your typical floor joists that were, you know, covered up with sheetrock. You could see the, the beams. It was like a 1970s build and they were way overspanned and undersized. Oh and I, I hadn't paid attention to it, but he was suspicious and, and he clearly <laughs> proved his point. <laughs> when we were on that second level but i remember he just he did that jump and then i was like holy cow and then i just saw him go mm -hmm. and then he took out his clipboard and took some <laughs> he notes sort of making notes <laughs> yes. yeah yeah that's great he yeah. would always take his notes and back in the day 
you know, with, he used to take field notes and then I would have to type up his reports and it was chicken mm. scratch. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. And I remember so many times, like he'd come back to the office later and I'm stumped. Like I have no idea what he wrote. And I'd say, Dwayne, what does this say? <laughs> and then he'd take it and then he'd, he'd hold it far away from his face and then he'd kind of squint. Uh, you know, he'd lift up his, his bifocals, he'd squint, and then he'd give it back to me. Go, I don't know what it says. <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do? You wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Bad writing, but usually I can tell what I've written. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Same so, here. Oh, oh my gosh. Right. You know, while we're on this point of talking about um, – people that have influenced us with inspections i just want to give a quick shout out to everybody on the structure tech team and um and some of the ogs that uh took me under their wing when i started i learned a lot from you guys as well melinda and george and i mean uh, the the list goes on and on but um but yeah. yeah everybody on the team has really taught me a lot awesome awesome thank you yeah. well um all right i'll, I'll share another one because yeah, i know i got next? a longer list yeah. than you uh, yeah, you another do. one Your turn. would be Mike Mosier. And he's a guy who did, he was like the truth and housing king in my mind. That's these single item inspection, not single, it's these required city inspections that you got to do in Minneapolis and St. Paul and a bunch of other cities before you can list a house for sale. And it's kind of like a miniature home inspection. They take about an hour to conduct. You got to be licensed in the city that you're going to be doing it in. And I remember when I was studying to get licensed in St. Paul, my dad had never been licensed in St. Paul. So we never did truth and housing evaluations there. And I, I needed somebody to kind of help me with a lot of this stuff because we, we'd never done it. And Mike Mosier was just Johnny on the spot. He's like, you can come along on inspections with me. Any questions you have about the exam, blah, blah, blah. Here's a bunch of information about it. And he was just so helpful knowing that I was going to be a competitor of his. And, and he's like, you're not going to be a competitor. You're going to be a colleague. We're going to be working in the same field together. And he had the, the, the same idea. Like you make what you make your competitor better. You're making the industry better. Uh, so yeah. gotta, gotta have a shout out to him. He was extremely helpful when I was first getting licensed to do those in St. Paul. A uh, lot of credit to him for being a much better truth and housing evaluator. Definitely. Sure. Is he still doing that? Do you know? As far as I know, I'm sure he still is. And I, I got to wow. tell you, he used to have this setup. I, he's probably moved on to doing everything digitally, but this is before we all had internet access everywhere. And he would bring around his computer and he had this setup. He had this little van and he had a laptop that he had this wheeling chair. He had a chair in the back of his van. And he'd sit there at his desk and he had all these batteries and his old van was powered up. He had 120 volt outlets all over the place. And so he'd sit there like, like an office and he had a printer set up and I don't remember what else, but it was like, he had the coolest mobile office for doing home inspections. And so he'd just go back to his van, spend 10 minutes there, type up everything. And then he'd print out the report and hand somebody a printed report. And it was like, wow, wow, this guy. This That's guy's impressive. advanced. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's all, now it's all emailed to people. I'm sure he doesn't have half that stuff anymore, but he was yeah. way ahead of his time. Yeah. You wonder what his setup is now. I'm sure it's an iPad and yeah. 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 Email. Well, yeah. A lot closer to what we're all using today, I bet. Uh huh. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's a great story. Oh man. Well, who's, who's next on your list, Tess? <clears throat> okay. Um, I just have a couple people left. So this is going way, way back. Baby Tessa, 18 years old, just graduated high school, and I joined AmeriCorps. Uh, I know I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I was um, working for a Habitat for Humanity that was down in Louisiana, Bio Area Habitat for Humanity. Um, in, uh, Homa in Thibodeau, Louisiana, which is like in our kind of Southwest of New Orleans. And it was 2006. So it was right after Katrina hit. And, um, 
I got thrown into <laughs> thrown into that. I had no clue what to expect, and um, it's a good thing I didn't, because if I did, I I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> but <laughs> being naive helped me out in this in this case, and um, and I'm glad I did it because it ultimately is kind of what led me to where I am today. But going back to influencers. Um, I basically, I, I showed up on this site right when they were kind of in the middle of just chaos of trying to build a hundred houses, going from building one house a year to a hundred houses that, that year. And they didn't have the leadership. They didn't have the organization. They didn't have the people to make it happen. And it was extremely chaotic. And I was supposed to be a, a construction crew leader. I was supposed to be responsible for taking the volunteers that would show up. And I never knew who was showing up, when when they were showing up, how many people we would have. Um, and I never knew, you know, ultimately, like, you know, when materials were coming in or anything like that. So it was extremely stressful, not to mention, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I had never built a house before and I had no training at yeah. all, no training. And I remember um, someone from AmeriCorps, National AmeriCorps came and, and there was myself and a few other people who were in the same boat as I, and they said, oh yeah, yeah, you'll get training. And, you know, th you know, don't worry about that. And uh, so to this day, I'm still waiting on that training. But <laughs> anyway, ah. luckily, luckily <laughs> there were volunteers, long-term volunteers, um, that basically was made up of a bunch of people that had retired and they owned RVs and would travel around from different habitat to habitat, volunteering their time and living on site or near site and working every day. And two of those long-term volunteers were on the site long enough um, and came several times while I was there over the course of that year. And they took me under their wing and they, they taught me everything. So this is, I'm talking about Bob and Doris Meyer and, mm, uh, they're from Tampa, yeah. Florida. Yep. And they're from Tampa, Florida, and they are just amazing people. They are just, they're some of the most hardworking, honest people I've ever met. They have the biggest heart, but do not mess with them. <laughs> No bullshit with them. Um, I mean, we would start the workday promptly at, you know, whatever time it was at 7 a.m. It, it seemed like every morning and, you know, and we would work hard all day. We take break for lunch. But um, they taught me everything from, you know, literally framing up a house, squaring it up, trusses, sheathing, you know, um, siding, windows, doors, finished carpentry. All of that um, was from them. And because of their patience with me um, and their generosity, then I was able to, you know, uh, do what I was hired to do, which was be a construction crew leader. So luckily, they came in early enough and I was a fast enough learner that after they left the site, I was able to take groups of volunteers and other AmeriCorps that came and show them what we had to do and how to do it and do it to the best of my ability. So... Um, I really appreciate, uh, you know, who they are as people and how generous they are. And they did this all without pay. They were just volunteers. I can't tell you how many, I have no idea how wow. many houses they have helped build, but it's, it's in the hundreds. And I, and I know they've worked with probably thousands of volunteers and they still do it to this day. They still volunteer like that. They cannot sit still. Um, I think they're in their early seventies. Um, and, uh, and they're the people that, you know, before COVID we were getting together like every January in Florida and, and doing a habitat, habitat build reunion with a bunch of friends. So I still keep in touch with them and they have a special place in my heart. And, uh, yeah, they, uh, they definitely helped chart my course to where I am today. Well, thank so. you, Bob and Doris. Awesome. Thank you, Bob and Doris. Yeah. 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 Yeah, inspirational people for sure. I want to be like them when I grow up. I don't. I don't have their energy though. Their stamina. I can't keep up with them, even when I was you have eighteen. To ask them what their secret is. <laughs> oh my god! Some people are just born with that, you know. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You and your dad included, Ruben. <laughs> you guys are like that. Yeah, I try to keep up with my dad. Yeah, he's got a motor for sure. 
<laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he yeah. does. Yep. Yep. Okay. So how about you, Ruben? Who's next on uh, your list? Well, you know, back when I first started getting into doing home inspections on my own, probably around, it's about 20 years ago now, I started spending a lot of time on the ASHI forums, these online discussion groups. And a couple of people who really influenced me, I just learned a ton, not not by even really chatting with them so much. I mean, we did, and they'd answer a lot of rookie questions that I would have, but uh, I mean, just reading everything they wrote to everybody on every possible question. One of them was a podcast guest we had on recently, James Caden or Jim Caden out of yeah. uh, out of Portland. Super knowledgeable guy. I, I can't tell you how much I've learned from him. Like when it comes to when it comes to language and being able to phrase something eloquently, like he's my hero. Like he, he has hmm. got such a way with words, such a smart guy. Hmm. And another one who I learned a ton from was a guy by the name of Kurt Mittenbuehler. And this guy's out of Chicago and I've never met him in person. I've never even seen a picture of him. I wouldn't recognize him if I, if I huh. did meet him, but I, I ranked him right up there with James. I mean, I just, I learned so much from him and he doesn't, participate in any of the online discussion forums. He doesn't have a blog. He doesn't do any of that stuff. So it's not like most home inspectors would even know who he is today, but super, super smart guy that I learned a ton from back in the day. And yet, yet another one who I I learned a lot (laughs) from those forums, he didn't participate as much, but anytime there was any kind of electrical stuff, he'd always be Johnny on the spot with the answer and he'd be an authority. Once he said it, there's there's no questioning like okay uh douglas <laughs> has spoken <laughs> and douglas hansen douglas hansen yeah. yes um and yep. he's I, I think he's the primary author of the code check series and these code check yeah. books i mean I, I don't know if they're still there but i remember i mean if you went to a home depot or any home improvement store they'd always have a tiny little literature section and you'd find the code check books there and in my mind, it's it's the best resource possible to understand in what the building codes are trying to say. You know, the building codes are not written to educate people. The building codes are there to tell you what the code is, to, to yeah. help code enforcement officials have an authoritative reference. But code checkbooks are there to help you understand what the code means. And yeah. The, just so so helpful i mean and i'll tell you if you're if you're a home inspector and you don't own the code check books you need to get the code check books <laughs> you, you just google code check you will find them the the latest one yeah I'm reach back on my desk here is uh code check complete third edition and this is a spiral bound book so you can easily flip through pages and and this thing it covers it covers uh, building, plumbing, mechanical, and electrical. Super, super fantastic book. But that, uh, and he's not the only one. Another, another, a uh, couple other authors: Redwood, uh, Redwood Cardin, Skip Walker, Skip who Walker. we also had on yep. our on our podcast. So l- learn a ton to through those guys. Yeah, shout out to Skip. Yeah. and you know what? Uh, on that topic, I just one more in that same vein would yeah. be somebody else whom I started to know. Once I started blogging, I started sharing a lot of my blogs on this site called Active Rain, which was really more for real estate agents. And I got hmm. to know a number of other home inspectors who were blogging. And one of the most prolific bloggers out there back in the day, he doesn't do as much anymore, it would be uh, Charles Buell. You know Charles, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm glad you brought up Charles. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't had him on the podcast, have we? No. And I don't think we have. Well, we need to get that fixed. We need to get Charles What's on wrong the with podcast. Us? What is wrong with <laughs> we us? We do. Yeah. yeah. Charles <laughs> is also a super knowledgeable guy, very well spoken. Yeah. And I, I just uh I just yeah. had breakfast with him when I was out in Seattle. That's that's Did where you? he is. Yeah. Yeah, it was oh. great. We got to catch up. Such such a sweet yeah. guy. 
Such a sweet he, guy. Yeah, such a nice guy. And he's got, he, you know, he was teaching a class recently on um, energy efficient homes that he's built throughout his career. It's a passion of his. And he's yes. kind of done some alternative building methods that are very affordable, but extremely uh, efficient and perform well. And so that was, yeah, he's just a really interesting guy. Nice guy. He is. Yeah. And and he was yeah. doing it way before it was cool. I mean, he's got he's got yeah. these black and white photos he took from homes he was building in the 70s. <laughs> like, yeah. He's been at this yeah. for a long time. He has. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, right. well, I'm, Tess, glad, you, I'm, back to I'm you. glad you brought up those people. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make this one brief. Um, <clears throat> uh, kind of during my college days and, and uh, um, pre-home inspector profession, um, I spent some time in the weatherization world. And that really taught me a lot about... Um, you know, kind of the practical application of building science, thinking about the different systems and, you know, how they are all integrated and function together. And so I was doing um, a lot of kind of testing for the first time of looking at different ventilation appliances and how ventilation might impact combustion safety and doing worst case depressurization testing on water heaters and furnaces and making sure, you know, there wasn't carbon monoxide coming back into homes once ventilation was added and making houses more energy efficient and airtight and better insulated. And a big part of that too was learning how to do blower doors testing and infrared imaging. And so there is, there's people from that time in my life that really taught me a lot. And a um, couple people, Bruce Stahlberg, we've had him on the podcast. Yep. He, um, extremely knowledgeable. He's been doing blower doors and IRs and weatherization stuff for a really long time. And he, he knows so much about mechanical systems and everything too. So I really learned a lot from him. Um, and then some other people when I worked at Sustainable Resources Center as well, Jake McAlpine, Sadie, um, there's a, there's a, the list goes on and on. I'm just very thankful for the training that I received from all those people in the weatherization world and, um, and the tools that they taught me to use and how to actually interpret, you know, real life data on building air tightness and pressures and, you know, mechanical systems and all of that. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. How about you, Ruben? All right. Well, winding down the list, uh, two, I'll just mm -hmm. kind of put them together back when I first, again, when I first started getting into doing home inspections, 2004, I started taking a ton of building inspection technology classes through North Hennepin Technical College, North Hennepin Community Technical College. I can't remember the exact name of it, but they had this really cool program. It was a two-year program on hmm. being a building inspector, not, not, not a home inspector, but, okay. uh, you know, working for a city and yeah. today they've stripped it down to just about, well, actually I, I haven't even looked recently. I don't know what's available, but the last time I checked, they had stripped it down to basically four classes kind of teaching you how to read a code book. But back in the day they had classes on like how to read a code book. They had the intro, they had commercial, they had legal aspects wow. of code administration. They had electrical, they had plumbing, they had mechanical, wow. they had air. I mean, all these different things were, I mean, each one was a semester long college class on how to wow. inspect this. And it's, it's unfortunate they don't have this program anymore because I, it was fantastic. There was some really good stuff. And a couple of the hmm. instructors that I ended up taking a lot of classes with and just learning a ton about houses and and code administration was was Roger Axel, whom I think we've had on the podcast. If we haven't, we we ought to. I don't. I don't think we have. Well, all right, I I need to reach out to him. I have to uh, go back and check. Just a fantastic instructor, and another one, a name that you'd probably know is Don Sivany. You recognize yes. that name? Yeah. Yes, I do. I just saw him at a at a CE event back in December. The Share okay. Brothers. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I he can't remember. There, yeah. he, he's so good about everything. I mean, he's just fantastic yeah. instructor. And I can't remember yeah. his title, but uh, the the best that I can remember, he's a big wig with the state. <laughs> that's that's yes, the best way to put it. He's he's very heavily involved in overseeing all aspects 
of code administration at the state of Minnesota. Tessa, you got that look in your eye. You're looking him up, aren't you? I what? am supervisor of education, code development, code adoption, and grants programs at the state of Minnesota. Is, yeah, so big wig works, huh? Has on LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't know how how up to date LinkedIn is for what his current status is, but yes, he's he's at the top of the food chain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Super smart guy. I'd love to get him on here yeah. too. And then yes. I'll just yeah. I'll just finish with my last one. Back in 2014, when we purchased. Private Eye. It was another home inspection company and moisture testing company. The the owner there, Barry Eliason, I, I consider kind of the godfather of intrusive moisture testing here in Minnesota. He he kind of kicked it all off back in the very late nineties because he knew that there was problems with all these stucco houses. So he went out okay. and got the training and kind of developed his own method for doing intrusive moisture testing. I mean, he was a self-taught guy. And now wow. anybody who's doing moisture testing in Minnesota, as far as I know, they're they're following his methods. And wow. I, I learned a ton about stucco and water intrusion on all types of houses, not just stucco. And a lot of mm. super cool tricks that I now teach in my water intrusion class. That was the other two-hour class that I taught when I was in Seattle. Okay. Um, yeah. Love teaching Good. all these tricks. And I owe a ton yeah. of it to Barry Eliason. So got to give a shout out to him for being a great teacher too. That rounds out my list. Okay. Okay. Well, perfect. I just have one more person on my list. Let's hear it. So, um, Tom Sherber and, um, Tom, this is a, I'm a little bit emotional about this because he actually just passed away like a month ago. Um, Oh no. Unexpectedly. Yep. Uh, he passed away in his sleep, um, visiting his family out in California. Oh. He, yeah. So I was just at his celebration of life um, last week. But um, he is definitely someone who's influenced me um, and helped me get to where I am today. And uh, I worked with, with Tom um, back at the University of Minnesota after I graduated um, doing research uh, for Department of Energy, the Building America program. But, um, it's hard to encapsulate who Tom was because he was so many things and he was, he had so many skills and talents, but at the heart of it, he was a good human being that was trying to help other people. And he had a passion for affordable housing and he worked with Minneapolis. Um, he, he was always trying to, um, you know, uh, improve the housing market and deal with policy. And then he was also boots on the ground, volunteering and helping at homeless shelters. Um, but he was also, he was a contractor and he was an entrepreneur and he, uh, he was, it, it's fun. So my time working with him at the university of Minnesota, I was working with him and Pat and I would say they were they they complimented each other nicely. Pat was the, you know, the academic, you know, building scientist, uh, as I mentioned before, always kind of seeing the pros and the cons and the, the gray area and never having a black and white answer. And Tom was was the yin to his yang. They were complete opposites. <laughs> Tom was like, okay, Pat, that's great in theory, but what about the real world? That's not going to work. And he just had this ability to kind of know, you know, what to do, um, you know, how to fix problems. He was very practical, very hands-on and always helping people with their projects too. He, he flipped and built and reconstructed a lot of houses in his lifetime and helped his kids with that and, and friends. And, um, he was, he was a scholar, but he was also kind of a jack of all trades. And so very talented person, but, um, he will be missed. Um, and, uh, and, and actually today is his birthday. No. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think he would have been, I think 73, 72 or 73 today. So mm. thinking about him today and I'm glad that we had this opportunity to kind of talk about people who have mentored us and influenced us. But Tom Sherber was definitely someone who helped me look at building science in a practical way. So I really appreciate the impact he's had on my life. Well, appreciate you sharing that, Tess. 
Yeah. 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 We could keep right. going, I think, couldn't we? <laughs> I think so we've got a, many. I, yeah. so many people. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll think of more people after we finish recording. But um but yeah, I am I am grateful to have so many wonderful mentors in my life. Yep. Yep. Well, uh for for anybody listening, take take a minute to thank your mentors. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh yeah we 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 all learn from those before us and nobody's nobody's an island in this business you got to rely on other people yeah. Yeah. so true yeah so true all right well tess well, i said this is gonna be a short one this is gonna be like a quick 20 minute episode here we are at like <laughs> 45 minutes in <laughs> it always happens right once again yeah once again <laughs> yep, yep. All right. Well, so how do people reach us, Ruben? You want to? Uh, again, you can email us. We read all of them. It's podcast at structuretech.com. I'm Ruben Saltzman for Tessa Murray. Thanks for listening. Take care.